Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, I'm waiting on some parts for the latest bike build, uh, some parts for the back wheel. So that's a few days away. Figured maybe we'll jump onto something else just to have a little bit of fun. And this is what our project's gonna be. It is a Kohler twin engine. One of the locals gave me a contact and said, hey, I got a couple of engines. Would you be interested in them? One of them smokes but runs and the other one uh, through a rod, I think, through the side of the block, and that's the one that you're looking at now. So I'm going to go strip it down for parts and, uh, you know, get rid of the carcass. But I figure maybe we'll turn the camera on, we'll take a, a look, see what happened to it, see why it failed, and kind of go from there. This engine has a low oil shutoff, and generally they do not run out of oil and blow up in this setup. It could have been disconnected, who knows. But, uh, so some other thing probably caused it to fail other than low oil unknown but that's what we're going to go dissect it and go find out i'm right, going to go get the bike off the bench we'll put the motor on that one and we'll have at it so it looks like parts have been picked off of it already probably for other machines the carb is missing which went right here there's a fan shroud that went around went around it anything else fuel pumps hanging i think that just bolts on the flywheel housing exhaust has a bunch of holes in it there's your starter it's like the we have busted the starter right off of the engine <laughs> with the, the bolt spent too let's get the, the hole is right there let's get this muffler out of our way and this tin out of the way we'll Get a peek into the inner sanctum of doom. Get that starter out of our way. So we got two right there. How does that look like to you? Half inch? Well, one of them's half inch. That one's like three eighths. The other half of the starter. Man, that thing pushed off hard. It was on a, a leaf vac. The things that they go on the back of a, a large truck, and in the fall time, they pick up the leaves with it. I believe that's what it, how it was being used. Let's go give her a. I can see one rod and it goes all the way around. <laughs> that might not be a good sign. So that makes it look like both connecting rods let go. I was kind of hoping once I was going to be connected, I was going to try starting it. But nope. I don't think so. Let's go. could pop off the front cover and get that out of the way and get a better look at things.
Draconian. Oh, there's hamburger everywhere. <laughs> Carnage of all sorts. We'll be fixing this one. Yeah, that's a few bit of parts that are down there that shouldn't be. And right through the block right there. Probably that rod. I wonder if it spun around and punched. Let's, I don't know, can we get that crank out of there? I'd like to look at the, the journal on there. I'm going to go dig out some pieces and I'll bring you right back. Letting it drip some oil. Let's go get the valve covers off. See if there was uh, any upper valve train failure. Hit it with a hammer. I don't see anything. See anything? An issue there. I don't see one push down more than the other. Let's take a peek at the other side. Too bad either. I'm gonna pull some of the tins off of here so we can get to the head bolts. Let's go pop the heads off. So I believe that is the oil pressure switch. I'm not sure if that's the one that shuts it off for low oil pressure. A lot of times okay, the ones I'm used to on, on generators, it's just it's more of an, a low oil light, not an oil, oil pressure. We got a 10 mil that's got to come out of there. Got another eight down here. You got another a ten and a ten. Uh, those two. I think I got the right size. Yeah. Suck it in. And see the one that's hidden under here. No sign of mice. It's got a lot of crap packed around it. And a lot of times that will cause the upper end to overheat, you know. I don't see all mouse nests packed down inside. Not the tin. Ten right there. And
Yeah, it's pretty packed. Let's grab a, something to dig with. It's definitely got an area where that would cause some overheating. I don't know which air was going through those. Same with on top. There's a fan on this side and there was a shroud and the shroud comes up and over and blows air across these fins to cool the engine down. No, that does not work very well. If I get clogged up. I'm not saying that's what caused it, but it does not help. Again, the mouse nest. Who knows too, because the shroud was already pulled off, so there could have been something all packed up in the shroud when they took that off, they knocked it out. But generally there's, there's remnants of like, you'll see like a, a bunch of like pine needles and like nesting, like cushion material from your patio cushions that you put away in your shed and you wonder why it had holes in the springtime. <laughs> it goes in here. You gotta get that intake manifold off. So let's, let's cut our way through some of the tie wraps. Let's see where that one went. Because that's our... It could have been unplugged on the other end. Hey, it won't run. It keeps shutting down. You pull the wire off, it stays running. <laughs> For a while. that we had a storm one year bad one power out for like eight days or something and at the time I had small engine customers that took care of their stuff and uh, they had a ask me for a generator anything for sale I said I don't have one for sale but I have one you could borrow so I, I went over there I set them all up it was a Coleman I bought a new, probably like in 95, 96, a little five horsepower, 2800 watt. Just enough to run the furnace in the fridge, you know. What's up with that? And I set it up in the yard. I gave him a quart of oil. It doesn't, you know, that didn't have a shut off on it. I told him, I go, every time, after, yeah, every time you put gas in, it probably run for, I don't know, four or five hours with that. I think it had like a two and a half gallon tank on it. So I say, whatever, six hours it would shut off. I said each time, just check the oil. I gave him oil to go put oil in it. Well, I get a call a day later and um, it, something happened to it. <laughs> I see a bent push rod right now on this one. That might be a sign of something. Well, I will get into that. Anyway, we finished my story. <laughs> uh, I go over to go look and their son had moved the generator away further away from the house but it had it sitting on a hill like this well it didn't run out of oil but it was pitched so far that it was starving for oil it was pitched far it was like you know like literally sitting on an angle like that on the side of a hill and i just looked at it and i just shook my head i'm like really i go even i gave you oil i set them up i set you know, all locations ran extension cords the whole thing so he was, <laughs> he's nice. He, he, I think I paid, it was like 300 bucks for it. It was like a $300 generator. And it was a couple years old at the time. And he gave me 150 towards it. I'd rather have had the generator at the time. You know, I was trying, I was trying to do it as a favor, but that's what happened. And uh, I've learned not to loan equipment out <laughs> as much anymore. I can see both connect uh, push rods bent and that one looks bent also. So the valves may have run into the piston, which would make sense if it threw a rod, the piston would be all the way up. Maybe the velocity of it still spinning. Took it out. Let's get these off. And it'll tell the story now, won't it? Instead of talking about it. I need, so that looks like 916s. Metric. Nope. You want to go a half? Be 
you get in there with that? We're gonna find out. Not like we have to treat this thing with kid gloves. Huh? Nope. <laughs> Alright, let me get a different apparatus. Actually, let's go get these uh, the rockers off. Do we have a socket for that out still? And now we can get on them. Now we can look at. We okay, going for push rods too. That one's pretty straight. If the push rod doesn't come out, is that a bad sign? <laughs> that one, not so much. It's got a tad bit of a wobble to her. Let's see if we'll go. Bertha. I guess you had more to that story was there was a time when the generators did not have low oil shutoff. And I think that's probably why they put them in for that reason. Cause it's, you know, it's something that's running for a long period of time, running, you know, 20, maybe 30 hours. And you don't think about the oil. You just kind of, it's running, running, running. Whereas like maybe a lawnmower once every six months, you take a look at the oil at least or once a season. But honestly, what's your run on your lawnmower half hour, once a week, Six months out of the year. Right. We'll give her some taps. I don't see any other hardware. I'm surprised that it's only four. I would think it would be. Oh, it is what it is. Ready? I see no damage to the cylinder head. Uh, I wonder, I don't see any hit, I don't see the valves that hit the piston, but it bent a push rod. I do see some hot spot right here, like possibly it was starting to overheat. It could have overheated and held the valve from not going in and bent it itself. Let's go give them, you see, let's go give them a couple of pushes. That one moves. They both move. Yeah. Let's go see if possibly we could tap that piston out of there. That's the one with no rod on it. The hand room. You need, a, you need a stick. This piston doesn't feel very long. <laughs> feels a, a tad shorter than it should be. Let's go with. Yeah, especially when it rocks from side to side. Come on. Go Get right there. It's all the crap on the edge that's holding it.
Yeah, that broke right up to the very tippy top, huh? The piston let go, the connecting rod let go of the wrist pin. I don't see much damage there though. But it definitely disconnected from there. Let's go flip the other side around. Actually, let's go pop a rag in there real quick. We'll see what we doctor's orders look like. We'll grab ourselves a light. Look in the hole. I honestly don't see any damage. Maybe a little bit. Nope, that's nothing. Do not see any smash from a connecting rod at all. Kind of surprises me. What's that right there? Nothing. <laughs> all right, let's go pop the other side off. See if we can see anything over there. These are bent. That one looks okay. Nope. I think the hydraulic lifters too, there's no adjustment on top. And the hydraulic lifter does have a little bit of give. Not much, because it is hydraulic, but. It's not a solid. All right, we'll just go. Wait the breath. Let's see what number two has to offer for us. Don't see any, any valve damage neither. So far, anyway. Yeah, same little hot spot. I think that just might be where the exhaust exits and maybe it heats up the head a little. Let's see if we can get this piston out. That's on your side. This one should still have a hunk of the rod connected to it yet. Nope, the rod is on the uh, the crank. We gotta play left tap all over again. That, 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 the hammer. Hit that with an air gun wouldn't hurt. But we're not gonna. We're gonna, we're gonna brutalize our way through it. Come on up. It's about as roomy as the other side, huh? Both rods left the wrist pin, but I don't see any real damage. Like something thread-wise took a hit right there, huh? We'll drop that down. Let's go take a look at the bore on this one. Let's go clean our hole before we look at it. <laughs> Looking at a dirty hole, right? And it looks like a crack right down there in the, the bottom. I see maybe a little more scoring on this side, but nothing. 
It's definitely more scored. It's got a big line right there. Right there. But this is the side that did not have a push rod bend. So I'm not sure why that happened. You can see that crank. That is really chewed up. So that one looks like it's probably okay. I will go pull this rod off, which is going to be this side. So this side, the rod looks okay. The rod, as far as the crank is concerned, looks like it seized on the crank for the other side that had the bent push rod. Let's go see if we get that rod off of there. But first, <laughs> let's see if we get those lifters out. A lot of some metal dust on top of them. That one's like aluminum. That one's got some wear. Right in the center of it. Got a divot in the middle. And they're both too. A lot of times lifters are supposed to rotate to stop that from happening. As they run, they're slowly supposed to do that. Not this one. That one doesn't have it. That one looks like it was operating like it should. I wonder if I had an oil pressure problem. Because that's the side the rod let go. Again, first. This one. There's still more of it here. So one side probably let go. And then what happens is just all the, the hamburger of debris that's flying around takes the other side out. Plus, I guess this thing was probably running at full speed. When it did it. Yeah. That one's pretty good too. It doesn't really show that same. Sure. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm talking about. You see like right here, it's worn straight going across. This one, there's a line there, but there's no, there's no physical dent in it. Wear spot. We got both those out. Let's, can we get that cam out now? It might just pull right towards us. There you go. A bunch of aluminum. Wipe it down. As you see anything funky in the lubes. See, oh, it's got like a wear spot right there. This one has a wear spot on that flat right there that the other ones do not. Hmm. I don't know if this one, we have to figure out which one had the bent push rod all over again. All right, let's see if we can unbolt. We can probably take the whole crank out if we can get the flywheel off. Let's see, we'll go for that. And I wanna keep these coils too, so I wanna pop them off of here. Flywheel, hmm. Sometimes they play well, sometimes they don't. I don't know whoever invented these clips. Probably good for speedy assembly in the factory. But I'll tell you. I'm not a big fan of them. You have to go take them apart. What they call them Jesus clips because you swear when you take them off. 
That's what I'm talking about. Those little one-way locking. Is that all of them? And looks like we need a good half. And some air. Puller. Puller, do you want to actually? I don't know if we're going to be able to get a good shot on it or not. Let's go run that in. We're going to go put a big pry bar behind it and whack that with a sledgehammer because I don't think we really care. <laughs> that doesn't work, they'll put a puller on it, but I'd rather hit it with a hammer. I'm not saying this is going to work, but it helps a lot of times. You can see, like, it's got a little bit of play in it. And again, even if it has a very tiny bit of play, if you pull that plate towards you and you hit on the center, it gives some place for the shaft inside to move, to go into. Compared to just hitting it without the, being pulled away like this, but I'll put tension on it. Let's go see what we get. Like that. You know what? I'm not gonna let us take it off. I gotta get the coils off first. Brake shoes let go. Brake shoes. <laughs> <laughs> magnets let go. <laughs> These are the magnets for the charging system and they are not glued on. That could be from, I don't think from us whacking with a hammer. There's the other ones. I don't see any damage in there so I don't think that had anything to do with its failure. I think it's just probably maybe an after effect, maybe after when it, it blew up, it took them out. I also don't know how long this was sitting too. It's been sitting a while. Like something we could play with later, huh? <laughs> All right, can we get, anything else we need to do to get that crank out? I think the, the rod might not give us enough room, but let's go find out. Can see the carnage. We go clean up a little bit and we'll get a better look at the pieces. One thing I notice, I don't see any of the cover. Where's the top cover? Let's see. What we got. So there's a governor who maintains engine RPM. Is right here has a couple of fly weights and that runs off the cam so this spins off the cam the faster it spins the more these weights want to pull out and I don't know if you could see it or not but the the more excited it becomes faster slower what that does let's go and your neck up a little is push on this lever right here. And you can see the top. Uh, can you see the top? Look up, I said. There you go. You can see the top up here. And this is the, the linkage that goes to the carburetor. So this maintains RPM. As it revs higher, the weights come out, push on this, and slow it down. As it speeds up, the weights go back in and it allows more throttle to go. So. That's how the RPMs try to maintain itself. Because most of the time on power equipment, it's not like your car. You're not like it's not like you're trying to work the gas pedal to to work your speed. You're trying to maintain an RPM for whatever the load is. So say if you got a lawnmower uh, going, and the lawnmower is 
cutting grass. First, you're not cutting any grass, and you're just trying to drive it across the, the lawn. And you see the engine's running at 3,600 RPM, full throttle, and tries to maintain that RPM. If without the governor, you just revved it to full throttle, it'll, it'll just rev so high it'll blow up. There's nothing really stopping it from uh, what its max is. But then the same token on the other end, when you go to put a load on it, and uh, say if you're holding it at 3,600 RPM, you're holding the gas pedal down an eighth of an inch, an eighth of the way to maintain that RPM. And as soon as you turn the mower deck on or, or drive the mower deck into thick grass and it puts a load on it, RPMs are just going to come right down. And there's got to be some way for the throttle to uh, come back and, and adjust for that to maintain that 3,600 RPM. So that's what this whole system does. It uh, maintains your ribbing. I've seen them blow apart before too and stick. I was thinking possibly that maybe the governor let go. But, and usually when that happens, this kind of is all blown apart or seized or stuck in one position or the other. I don't see that being a case here. Seems to be all right. I don't see any teeth missing off the gear. Nothing saying that you can't override it by grabbing the throttle too though. You, yeah, because it's, it's a... Um, it's a spring connection between the actual carburetor and the throttle. There's not a direct connection. There's a there's this this linkage that you go through. Uh, all right. I don't see anything in the case. Let's go look at the oil pickup. I don't see anything terribly wrong there. If the oil pump still turns, that's pretty tight. That's very tight. That oil pump is more tight than it should be. Maybe we'll pull that apart in a minute. It could be just the crap it sucked up it when it right when it blew up. I don't know though. That is that's not right. <laughs> Let's go look at that can uh crankshaft. It doesn't look like it got super hot, which is weird. Usually like when a when a, a rod goes, can you see? Look back down again. There you go. Usually when a rod goes, it gets like blue. You can tell it it overheated. That's the wrong one, isn't it? Where's the right socket? I think the chances are that that's going to have enough snot to unbolt those. A little bit of beat upness, but again, for being right next to a rod that blew up, there's no rod bearings, I don't think, on these. It's just the end of the casting. You can see where some metal doubled over there. And the oil pressure comes in from the center of the crank. Oil pump, I should say. Pumps oil in, there'll be a hole. Right there. And it pressurizes that port. And then also goes up to probably the cam too. Yeah, I don't see any bluing at all. Any signs of like overheating. I see where, again, where it let, let loose and all the aluminum is stuck to it. But I don't really see where it got cooked. That's a mess, huh? Uh, that would be second in line for the oil pump. Yeah, not that it matters. They're literally right next to each other. So I don't see that being an issue. I don't see anything with the gear. Let's go open up that oil pump. It seems just a little sketchy to me. Go get reset up and uh, pop that apart. 
Let's see, get that pump off. I would say the pump failed. Oh, she didn't do that. Too much because you think it would just strip the gear right out. Let's go see if we can get that back on there. See how the pump works. Oil comes in where it's on the large side. And then as it gets squeezed through, it punts it out the other side. Use the inlet and, the inlet and exhaust. I'm not sure which one's which, but and then there'll be a pressure regulator. If the pressure gets too high, which will be right here, there'll be a spring and a plunger. And if the pressure gets too high, that plunger moves up and oil can escape probably right from here. Might be over here. I'm not sure on this. But anyway, the oil pressure can escape so it doesn't go too high. And then on the other end, you know, it closes back up when it, the pressure comes back down. Let's go see. Get it going. Is that a crack going right across it? Again, it did blow up, so that, <laughs> that could be an issue. How to tell? There's like a line there, though. I would think if the pump failed and locked right up, like I said, it probably would have taken out that plastic gear. That gear, it would have stripped out. I don't see any of that. It turns fine now. It's an oil squisher. <laughs> Pulling that in tab Start inlet would this be an outlet Let's see where it goes I think so yeah that's the outlet and that goes in. looks like it feeds up into the oil gallery where the oil filter is and then probably on its merry way from there a twist off that oil filter maybe <laughs> let's go get something to twist off that oil filter nice having those little oil filter uh, covers that cutters you can open the filter and see what happened to it on that anymore no. hmm. we're going in unless it explodes Pour out what's in the a little metallic. -y. Nothing that I would say, aha, that caused it. Can we get what we got to do to get them out of there? <laughs> you got to cut it again. Maybe we can uh, peel it back with a pair of wire cutters. Hold on.
We just need a couple of pleats, really. We don't need to get the whole thing apart. Everything's so oily, you can't hold on to it. And I'm trying to do it in front of the camera. <laughs> right. I wouldn't exactly say we found huge metal shavings or anything that was a failure. Yeah. I'm not sure what well, it has me just a little questioning other than the fact that, you know, of course the rod locked up on the crank and it took itself out. Let's see if we can find any. This is the upper end. That looks like it just fractured from stress. There's no Probably what happened was the rod let go and the rod racked on an angle, causing the tops to fail. And of course, one side took out the other side. And this is going to be. Let me see if we can get a decent piece of the rod. Here we go. Definitely see like two different levels of damage. Hmm. I don't think it ran low in oil. It doesn't have that look. It doesn't have that overheated look. Not saying that it didn't. Uh, oil pump, I think, was working okay. I don't think that was an issue. The bent. Push rod, though. I want to think about that one for a little bit. Well, that sure spread across the bench pretty quick now, didn't it? Yeah, I'm not really coming up with a good answer. Some a definitive point to look at to say, okay, yeah, that's what caused it. I, I just think the crank got a little bit of, you know, the aluminum on the, the rod kind of embeds itself in the crank surface a little bit. And once that happens, it just kind of goes around and grabs more each time it goes around. And I think that's essentially what the failure was to the point where it had so much and it was running at such a high RPM that finally this was binding up and then the rod right above failed. It bent and either broke right off and then now it's just hammering around and it just making hamburger out of everything else that's in there. Again, that thing's running at, you know, 3,600 RPMs. And it had a flywheel on it. This, again, this was a blower or a vacuum. And that acts like a big flywheel also. So it's not like it goes and smashes into stuff five or ten times. It smashes into stuff for, you know, <laughs> about two or three thousand times before it finally stops. Yeah, actually, you can see a little bit of blueing down in there. Yeah, that's not going to go hang my hat on. Again, also, the flywheel, that was out of the the fan wheel that was on it. You can see it's kind of cobbled on the end of it. Maybe that was out of balance and it was causing it to shake, causing an issue. That bent push rod, I don't know why it did that. I don't see any damage to the cylinder heads. Not that maybe it, it did. My thought was that a piston, piston came up, stayed up really far, again, because the rod got disconnected from it. And then the valve goes to open, but the piston is already in the way and it can't. So then the, the, the weakest thing in the link is the push rod to bend. And with the pistons, I don't see any damage. Where did they go? What do we do with those? 
Yeah, of course, the bottom's a totally hamburger. I don't see. Maybe right there? Nope. Because it's really close to the outside. You know, the piston's not big, so. It would be out here somewhere. Here, right there. Usually, when it happens, though, the a valve will bend and stay open. And I don't see that being the case. Maybe that one a little. I got everything moved around. I can't tell. Well, guys. It was uh, fun taking it apart. Again, the magnets too. There's another thing that was kind of weird. The magnets weren't attached inside the flywheel. But we made enough damage or a mess. I'm gonna go scav, scavenge the good parts, put them in a crate, put them upstairs. We still have the other engine, which is the same as this, but it smokes. So possibly we can even use some of the parts from this one. See how this video does. Maybe we'll tear that one down, find out why it smokes, possibly be able to fix it or not. But just for uh, well, investigative purposes, I'm just having some fun. On a, on a lazy afternoon. Guys, signing out. Thank you for hanging out with me and uh, doing a little bit of wrenching on junk. I'll see you soon. Later. I think right about there is a the thumbnail. <laughs> Something like that.